What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmondson here from Schwartz Edmondson Web Design. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at building this static mockup inside of Squarespace. And we're gonna be using CSS from my course, Custom Layouts in Squarespace. So you're gonna get a behind the scenes look at building a site from scratch and how the CSS from my course can help you to build more complex layouts. All right, let's jump right in. So this is the website that we're gonna be building today. And uh, it's a pretty cool website. It has some nice custom layouts that we're gonna be achieving with CSS from my custom layouts in Squarespace course. It allows us to do some really cool things like place page sections next to each other so we can get this cool grid pattern. And then it also allows us to do cool split layouts like this where you have an image on the left and then content on the right. In the course, I also teach how to do this type of box content layout where you can have equal height boxes with content on the inside. So this type of really custom design is only possible with CSS from my course. So I just want to get that out there up front. So if you want to try and like follow along and build designs like this, uh, it will require the CSS from my course. But there will be a lot of other really good learnings throughout this video as well. So even if you don't have my course and, and you don't want to purchase it, that's totally fine. You're still going to get a lot of really valuable information out of this video. So let's jump right in and start building. So I'm in my Squarespace dashboard and I always start from a style guide. So I'm just going to come in here and duplicate this style guide website and it'll create a new copy of the style guide for me. Now, starting with a style guide is a best practice. Uh, it's something that I always do now because it makes it so much easier to set up all your styles from the very beginning. And uh, once you do that, then it makes building out the rest of the site really easy. So I'll jump into the style guide and we can go ahead and set up our fonts and our colors to get the layout of our website exactly how we want it. Okay, so this is the style guide. It has all my headings, all my paragraphs, all my buttons for every different color style that is available in Squarespace. And so we can jump in here and get our headings, our fonts and our headings and our paragraphs. We can get all the design uh, done right up front. And then once we build out our page, everything looks very consistent across the entire site. So that's why I definitely recommend starting from a style guide like this. In this video, I'm not gonna show the whole process of setting up the fonts and the colors and the style guide. I have another video on that, which I'm gonna to link to at the end. In this video, I just wanna focus on the layout. So I'm gonna jump ahead to a point in the video where I've already filled out the style guide and I'm ready to start building out the sections on this page. Okay, so let's go back to the pages panel and we can begin designing our site. So this will be the home page, and I wanna make this the home page. So I'm gonna be speeding up parts of this video when I'm just doing basic tasks that don't need to be explained in great depth. So it'll keep the video from being like an hour long. So here I'm just putting in the content and now I'm trying to adjust the content width of the section and the content alignment in the section to try and get it in the bottom left-hand corner. And you'll notice I couldn't get it all the way to the edge and that's because of the site spacing. It had a maximum width of 1400 pixels so it couldn't get any wider than that. So what I'm doing here is I'm turning up the site width all the way up as high as it can go. And when I do that, then the space on the outside of the website is only controlled by the site margin. So that allows me to get the content all the way over to the very left-hand side of the website. And you'll notice in the mock-up, that's how it is. The content is like almost all the way up against the side of the website. There's just a little bit of a gap there. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just playing with the site spacing to make sure that I get something that looks close to the margin in the original design. I'm not really happy with my heading. It doesn't really match the mock-up very well. So I'm further tweaking my style guide to make sure that my heading three matches the original design a little bit better. So I turned up the font weight a little bit and I turned down the font size and now it's matching the original design. All right, so that feels a lot better in terms of matching the design more closely, uh, but I don't want it to go all the way across, so I'm gonna change the content width to small. We have it aligned to the bottom and we have it aligned to the left, and that's how we can get it in this bottom left-hand corner. So now we're matching our mock-up uh, pretty nicely here. So uh, let's go ahead and get the navigation to match better. Um, so I'm just going to save this and we'll add some pages to the navigation and it'll just make 
our website feel more complete if we have those other pages up there. So here I'm just adding more pages to the main navigation. And in a second, you'll see me drag the home page out of the main navigation and into the not linked section. And the reason I did that is because it's most users know these days that clicking on the logo will take you back to the home page. So having the home page in the main navigation is just sort of a waste of navigation space. So now I'm just changing the styles of the navigation to match the mockup a little bit more closely, changing the font styles and also making the button green. Next, I'm going to hide the footer. The mockup doesn't really have a footer, so I can just write a quick line of CSS to hide it. There's still this space down here where the footer is. There is no footer, but our website's background is green. So it's actually just the background showing through. Once we get enough content to make this page be 100% height, then we won't see that green at the bottom anymore. All right, so we have this section done. Uh, there is a little icon in this section. And what I would do there is I would just go to a site like Icon Monster and I would get a like down arrow SVG. And you could also make your own SVG too if you don't find anything that matches perfectly. I'm just gonna go ahead and go with this down arrow. Uh, it's the closest thing that I can find right off the bat. Of course, I would spend more time to find something that more closely matches if this was a real site. So now I can copy that SVG code, pop in a code block, and paste in the SVG. And now we have a down arrow right there. And it sort of somewhat matches the down arrow there. Of course, it would need to be much more bold. Okay, but that's a really quick way to get an arrow in there. Cool, so let's go ahead and add in another section. And this is just going to be uh, a blank section with a background banner. So I'll delete this content and we'll just throw in a spacer block there. I just like to throw in a spacer block so it doesn't tell me it's like a blank section when I just want a section with a background image. So now we can move on to the next sections and this is gonna be our grid style layout. So what I'll first do is I'm just gonna build all of these sections as if they were 100% width and I'll build all four sections stacked on top of each other and then we'll add the CSS from the course and then they'll automatically uh, we'll be able to turn them into this grid style layout. So now that we have each page section built out here, I'm going to copy and paste the CSS from my course that allows these page sections to be next to each other. So I have pasted in the CSS from my course and it doesn't look any different, but now we're able to control which sections we want to reside next to each other. So the way that we can do that is if we want to have two 50% sections, all we have to do now is change the content width to 51 for each one of these sections and then the content will take up half the width of the screen. So I've set up different special um, keywords essentially, different keyword values. So when you match one of the values then cool things can be done with each section. So when we want two sections to be next to each other to take up 50% width then you set the content width to 51 and now you can see we have this grid style layout that is similar to what is seen in this mockup. And again, this CSS from my course is the only way that we would be able to do this in Squarespace. So it definitely needs some work to get it to look more like the mockup, but we can get it to look much closer. So now I'm just playing with the spacer blocks and the alignment within the sections to try and get the look of having some of the content at the very top of the section and then some of the content aligned to the bottom of the section. And what I eventually stumbled upon working well was if I had the content centered within the section, I could place the spacer block in between the two text blocks and then just increase the space until the content looked like it was at the very top and then the other content looked like it was at the bottom of the section. So after building out this layout, I realized the bottom right hand corner of the grid is actually supposed to be a gallery section in the mockup. And right now I just have it as a static banner. So I decided to build out the gallery true to the mockup. So I'm adding a little CSS here from the course. And it's really cool because we can also place gallery sections next to page sections. So now I've built out the layout true to the mockup. I'm adding a little bit more CSS to make it responsive so that it stacks on mobile devices and you can see it stacks perfectly there on mobile. So now we have our grid section totally built out, accurate to the mockup, and now we can start working on the next section, 
which is that white section with all of the images. Now this section build is pretty straightforward. We just have a text block on the left and then a grid of image blocks with text blocks below them. And so it was pretty simple to build this one out. Right below this one comes the split section. So I'll start building that one out right now. So now that I have my section built out, I'm going to copy my CSS for the split layouts from my course, and then I'll paste it into my CSS window, and we can set up the split layout really easily once that's done. Okay, so I've pasted the split layout CSS into my site, and again, nothing has changed yet. We have to assign the split layout to the section, and it's really easy to set up a split layout. So what you first have to do is set the content width to 47. And then you set the content alignment based on which side you want the content to be. So if you want the content on the left and the, and the image on the right, uh, which we want the opposite. So we're going to do the content alignment to the right. And then once we hit save, we'll see the split layout automatically come into effect. Perfect, so now we have our split layout with our content on the right and our image on the left. And the awesome thing about it is we can change the, the background color to any other color and it automatically gets that styling for that section. But we wanna leave it on white minimal uh, since that's the color style that we want for this section. Okay, so next we have our boxed content section. So we'll go ahead and add in another section down below. So basically we want three columns in this section. And a good way to plan out your columns is just to drag three spacer blocks next to each other. And then we can drag our text blocks right below each spacer block. So now I know that takes up one third of the page. I'll drag another text block below here and then our last one below here. And I'll copy all of this and I'll paste it to the other two text blocks. So now I can delete the spacer blocks since I know each of these columns is exactly the same width and I know that they are all next to each other. So this is the setup that we need to create the boxed content. Now I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste the box content into my custom CSS. And I'm gonna assign the box content to this section using the section's data section ID. So of course I go over all of that in the course, but I don't wanna show you guys the course CSS. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video. Boom, I have pasted in my boxed content and immediately my boxes are now surrounded uh, in these borders and they're equal height, which is awesome. So the reason this is so cool uh, is because if I add more content to a certain box, all of the other boxes are going to responsively respond and still be the same height. So that's a problem that you run into if you just try and add a border to each text block in the section. They're not all the boxes are going to automatically stay the same height. And the cool thing about this too is like we could add a button block to the bottom and I'll go ahead and add a button block to the bottom of all of these. And you'll notice that because of the CSS that I've set up, the button automatically sticks to the bottom of the box. So a client is never gonna give you the perfect amount of text for each box. Um, so this is a great way to have it look really clean and neat. It doesn't matter if this one has a lot of text and this one only has a little bit of text. The boxes stay perfectly aligned and the buttons will always stay aligned to the bottom of the boxes. So I don't want boxes or I don't want buttons on this site. So I'm going to go ahead and delete them. But I just want to show you how cool the box content is. And the nice thing is it's super responsive. So if I drag down the screen size, you'll see how the boxes behave. So when there isn't enough room for all three, then the lowest box drops down below, which is great. And then on mobile, each box stacks on top of each other. So a really nice feature there, totally responsive. And it's a nice way to group content into boxes. So finally, we just have one more section to add. So I'm gonna change the background color to black and we'll add in the quote here. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is go back to my image section. I'm not really happy with how big the images are. I want them to be a little bit smaller, and I think that'll make this section look a little bit better and cleaner. So the easiest way to do that is just to save the image with more margin or more empty space on the right and the left. So 
It's a no-code approach that's really easy to implement, so I've just cropped the image so that it has more space on the left and the right, and I'll re-upload all of these images. I've resaved them with extra space on the sides, but not on the top and the bottom. And so you can see it just makes this whole section look a little bit cleaner to have a little bit of extra space on the sides of the images. So now they won't appear super big. Uh, they look a little bit smaller. And again, it's just such an easy no-code approach to doing that. So that kind of brings us to our final design. We were able to replicate that look pretty quickly. And it is a really nice responsive website that is going to look good across all devices. So even on these kind of funky in-between sizes, everything's still looking really good. Our boxes are stacking on top of each other, which is nice. Really liking the look on mobile. I think everything presents really nicely. So let's do one final scroll through of the website. I'm really happy with how this grid section turned out. I think it's awesome that we can put the gallery section in there. Really happy with the split layout. The boxes look good. So this would be very easy for the client to manage because it's still drag and drop, but we were able to do a really complex design thanks to the CSS from the course. With a little bit of extra time spent tweaking the spacing and dialing in the fonts, I think we could get almost a pixel perfect recreation of the original mockup. But as it is, I'm really happy with how closely we were able to recreate this mockup inside of Squarespace. If you are interested in checking out my custom layouts in Squarespace course, I have a link in the description below where you'll have the opportunity to check out a free training and save $30 off the already low price. Before I go, I quickly want to share a testimonial that I think perfectly encapsulates what this course is about. It was nicely done and easy for me to follow thanks in part to the copy and paste CSS. I've been dabbling in CSS for several years now but am no expert and have no plans on it. So when I saw this course, I was very excited indeed since it has exactly what I was looking for. Chris made it look easy in his sales video and it pretty much was. He did not disappoint. Chris's teaching style was also a welcome relief for me. He was quite clear in his directions and descriptions. I personally went through the videos three or four times each myself, but it just helped me to really get a better feel for it. I love what this course has allowed me to do for my site and I'm just getting started. I'm still going through it again to see how else I can improve on my site. I count this course as an asset and I'm very happy to have made the investment. It was well worth the price, which by the way, it was well priced. Thanks so much, Chris. I'm certainly looking forward to any updates, upgrades, or to whatever you come up with next. So talented, Maria Gagnon, Maria Gagnon Visuals. Thank you so much to Maria for leaving that testimonial. If you want to check out all the other ones, you can do so on the course page. This is a Squarespace course made by a Squarespace web designer for Squarespace web designers. So again, if you want to save $30 off the price, definitely check out the free training in the link below. This course is for both Squarespace 7.0 and 7.1. All right, guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much. I hope you learned something today and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.